Sometimes we wake up and wish we could just stay in bed, stay in the dreamland of our own minds and stay in our own fantasies. However, stay in bed for the entirety of a day and see how depressed you feel. It's not a good way to live. So why then do we dream? Or a more interesting question might be, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Today, we're going to look at three theories of why we dream and what dreams mean, and then create a course of action of how we can use our dreams and the information they give us to make our lives better. But to do that, I need to tell you about a dream I had recently. And by recently, I mean about two years ago. I remember in this dream I was running, which for a disabled kid seems odd, but in dreams things don't have to make sense. I was running away from somebody I had met in school, and I'll tell you that we didn't really get on well, so I know I was running away for a reason. Eventually I reached this green near where I live, and I had nowhere else to run. I was stuck, and at this point the people who were chasing me caught up with me and beat me up quite badly. Then some other things happened in the dream that aren't really that relevant, but what I do remember is right at the end of the dream, I opened my front door and there was an apology letter from the main person that beat me up. And then I woke up and I remember thinking, what the hell was that about? Now I'm gonna use this as an example to showcase the three theories in this video to understand what the hell was going on in my head so we can understand what's going on in yours. Now, a lot of people can be skeptical about dreams and say that those who analyze them are silly. So for those people, before we get abstract, let's think about what happens in your brain when you're dreaming. Your brain goes through various stages throughout the night with different levels of activity. We dream most often in a state known as REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep, where our brain shows similar activity to when we are awake. Now, if I put my evolutionary psychology hat on, here it is, I would say that dreams have an evolutionary purpose because they prepare us for potentially threatening or concerning experiences that we may have in the future. Meaning that if these things happen in waking life, then we're more likely to survive it, and that's pretty good. Now, this makes sense to me, as many evolutionary theories do, but I don't think it's a complete explanation. Yes, maybe I had to have this dream to prepare for or rehearse a time when I'm going to be chased and then beaten up, but the reality is that's very unlikely to happen. So in that case, why did I actually have the dream? Well, this guy can explain that. This is Sigmund Freud. He was a massively influential psychologist who was the first person to properly claim that dreams were a product of our unconscious mind. The unconscious consists of all the things that you don't want to think about or don't want to face. This includes your fears, your desires, your traumas, and your childhood experiences. Freud came up with a theory known as wish fulfillment that claims that our unconscious repressed desires appear in our dreams. And in that dream state, we attempt to satisfy these desires or these wishes. Freud said that it may not be always obvious how these desires will manifest themselves in your dreams, but figuring out that was the purpose of his dream interpretation. So I'm now going to interpret my dream from a Freudian perspective. Hello, doctor. Hi, Joel, come in, sit down, make yourself comfortable. It's very good to see you. Now, I've had to think about the dream that you told me about last week, and I think I've come to a few conclusions. I think that the apology letter in your dream satisfies your desire for the world to say sorry to you for the difficult things that you've been through. Really? Why would you say that? Well, for any of the issues that you've had growing up, you want the world to apologize for you. And in the dream, the beating and then the subsequent apology letter satisfies that repressed desire for the world to apologize. Hmm, maybe you're right. But there must be another theory because this seems to be way too simple. What about the times where dreams aren't about repressed desires? Who are you talking to? Oh, don't worry, we're done here. Carl Jung was a student of Freud's and when he was asked about dreams, he said this, in each of us is another whom we do not know. He speaks to us in dreams and tells us how differently he sees us from the way we see ourselves. I prefer Jung's theory to Freud's because it doesn't just simply focus on repressed desires. It sees dreams as a general communication between our unconscious and our conscious self. Our unconscious is the other person that Jung talks about in that quote, and sometimes there are things in our unconscious mind that we need to concern ourselves with, but our conscious self may not want to do that. 
but the dream is the place where we concern ourselves with these things. Viewing dreams in this way makes us see them as tools that help us understand ourselves and the actions that we need to take next in the world. To Jung, in my dream, my unconscious was telling me that I didn't feel like I fit in with my age group and I was always running away from that fact. And fundamentally, I need to forgive and let go of my frustration with feeling different. When I realized that from reflecting on my dream, I now give less of a shit if I don't feel I fit in in a certain place. And you know what, that's been incredibly rewarding. So how can you go away from this video and begin to interpret your dreams to gain the information of how to improve your life? Well, there's a step-by-step -step process that I'm calling don't let your dreams be dreams. What we're gonna try and do is turn your dreams into useful information that can be turned into decisions or actions. Firstly, right, write down your dream in as much detail as you can. Don't worry about it being perfect, just do it. Then read through what you've written. And at that point, you can note down the key factors of the dream. Where were you? Who were you with? What were you doing? How were you feeling? Then you can use this list to try and think about what these factors actually mean. What do the people, places, feelings, and actions represent to you in your life? And with that, you'll begin to think about the symbolic significance of your dream and how that relates to your waking life, i.e. what is my unconscious trying to tell me? The people in my dream represented my school experience and the battles that I had faced there. And this dream was about accepting and forgiving the difficulty that I had faced in my past so I no longer have to repress any anger or any shame. Your dreams are a tool that your imagination provides to you to improve the way that you go about in life. So to answer the question that I posed at the beginning, when we all fall asleep, where do we go? We go to the land of imagination, to the land of possibility, to the land of discovery. And it just so happens that we're lucky enough to experience that every single night of our lives.